Hello everyone and welcome to another video tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover joystick mappings, which is a common problem when moving uh, into simulation for the first time and using uh, some USB gamepad or joysticks. So what we're going to cover today is some Linux tools that allow you to test out your joystick and make sure it's working properly, as well as how to find out um, what your robot code needs to look like in order to, to control the robot the way you want. So we're going to start off by looking at a program called JS Test GTK. Um, if I reopen it, or w first of all, you can install it by running sudo apt get install JS Test GTK, and then you can run it. And when you run it, you'll see I have a gamepad plugged in, so it detects that. If we double click on it, you can see all of the mappings. So as I move the left joystick up, this moves up. Notice, however, that the axis is 1, and it moves down. If I move that same joystick in the x direction, you can see it's axis 0. And when I move it to the left, it goes negative, and positive, it, right, it goes positive. Now, you would hope that the right joystick would be axis 2 and 3, but they're not. The x-axis of this joystick is axis 3, and the y-axis is axis 4. And again, moving it up makes it go down. We're going to need to know all these things when we go to write our robot code. For this example, I'm going to be using the GearsBot example. Um, we have other videos on GearsBot if you're curious about it. Here I'm going to insert it into my world and start a driver station by running simds. Okay, as you can see, my gamepad is detected and I can now enable. I'm then going to open up my tank drive example program, which I've modified slightly. I've checked to make sure that my motor ports are correct, and I've added a print statement so we can see what the output of our axes are before we write them to the motors. In this case, you can see I'm using axis 1 and 4, which I got from running JS test. I want the left mm, joystick moving up to be the motor on the left side of the robot moving forward. So I've taken axis 1 and negated it so that up is positive, and I've done the same thing for axis 4. So if we run this, we should be able to use our print statements to check whether we got the joystick axis correct. So as you can see, both of those numbers are pretty much 0, and I move, um, as I move them up they become 1, and as I move them down they become negative 1. Let's go over to Gazebo and see if we're seeing the right behavior. So as I move both joysticks forward, he drives forward. As I move both back, he drives back. And if I move them in opposite directions, he turns and likewise in the other direction. The turning here is not very good because we're only using two of the motors. We should really be using all four. But this demonstrates how you can get your joysticks working. The same thing applies for buttons, but with a small catch. Note when I press the A button, JS test shows that it's button 0. As you press other buttons, you'll be able to tell which button ID they are. The catch here is that these do not match up directly with the button number in your robot program. Because the buttons here are 0 indexed, but buttons in WPILib are 1 indexed, you'll have to add 1 to each of these buttons. So pressing A becomes button 1. Pressing B becomes button 2, etc, etc. Alright, I hope this was helpful in explaining how to correctly map your joystick. One final note, if you find that for some reason your simulation and your real robot don't work with the same button mappings, you can of course change the, ax uh, change the motor port or the, or the axis here um, according to whether or not you're in simulation. This can be done by asking if robot.is simulation or robot.is real. 